and welcome back to another video in the Tiny Tech video series. As you know, this is a video series that focuses on bits of technology that could be useful in your professional work, working in the office, working on shared governance, helping students out with technology, or of course teaching one of your classes at the college. So today we'll talk about using a Jamboard. And a Jamboard is something I think you've used at the college with some of our diversity work. It's a really great opportunity to almost create a structure like sticky notes, but you're doing it visually on the screen for students or for your colleagues who may be working with them on committees and shared governance. And so it's a great way to get discussions going. It also has anonymity built in if you like that. So if people want to ask um, something that maybe has a sensitive nature to it or could be controversial. This is one way of making it anonymous from the get-go. So let's jump in right now and I'll particularly talk about how I'm using Jamboards this quarter in fall teaching one of my new classes at the college. So very likely at this point you're probably pretty familiar with what a Jamboard is. We've actually used uh, Jamboards in different contexts on campus. I know if you've been involved in the LTCC Equity and Inclusion Task Force group meetings, a lot of discussion there about trying to, um, through these listening sessions, bring in different perspectives and ideas. Um, a lot of just different opportunities when you use a Jamboard. And what's really cool about the Jamboard is that you have opportunities to really consider wide ranges of ideas, particularly with like the use of different colors on the Jamboard and the fact that you can actually be anonymous in terms of using it. And so to get started, just go to um, one word, J-A-M-B-O-A-R-D, jamboard.google.com. If you don't have your Google account, you can sign up and do all that. So I'll show you how I plan to use it in fall quarter just as a new way to try to bring more out of my students and get perspectives going. So for every week of the quarter, I have a different question set up that relates to the chapter topics. And you'll see here for this week, I believe there's just one. Yeah, just one, one page talking about. No, I take that back. There's three. What is culture? How does culture affect me or not affect me? And then questions about their first assignment. So the idea behind Jamboard is when you get to your blank page, you can use these controls up here. So you can use a blank background or colored background of most colors that you might want. You can also decide on the zooming amount, zooming in and out, and you can do a lot of this with your keyboard to make it easy. You can, as I said, create multiple pages or they actually call them frames. So not a lot that you have to do at the top. You can title your Jamboard when you first uh, start and then you can go back and rename it if you like. So I just named it based on every week. And then what I'm doing is at the top, I'll just create the link or use the share button. Based on, on using the share button, you can decide if people can edit. You definitely want that. If you're using your Jamboard live, you definitely want people to be able to edit in real time. So it wouldn't make a lot of sense to just leave it as viewing. Um, you definitely want someone to have that editor role because the idea behind it is to collaborate as if you're doing a charade or um, like a session where everybody's coming together and putting their ideas on a physical wall with sticky notes or doing a mood board or something like that in the world of uh, design, three-dimensional design. So what I recommend is you might think about if you're doing it for a class session, giving it a title just to frame it a little bit. And then you can go over maybe just in a few minutes what students should expect using a Jamboard. So going through the controls here, you can see that you have a, a pen control. And if you double click or I guess single click, you can choose different colors. So find the color that works best for your particular background that you choose. And then you can also erase. And it doesn't erase like an un in undo sense, although if you do undo, it will allow you to do that. The entire drawing goes away here at the upper left corner, as opposed to just using an actual eraser that's you know reminiscent of an eraser on a blackboard. You can also just uh, use this to move objects around. We don't have any yet, so you can't really see that. And then the sticky notes are really nice because you can do any number of colors here. Um, you can even choose no color. So if I want a yellow sticky note, I could put it there. And then if we move from the to the pointer view that we were looking at, this is where you can move them around. You can also go in and decide on an order. So you can do almost layers if you send this to the back. 
it should then, with our next one, let's do a second one, it should allow you to put them on top of each other, I think, almost like layers in Photoshop or GIMP. Yeah, exactly. So this is in front of the other. If I want to rearrange that, go back to order and bring to front. Okay, and now it's on top of the other one. Um, so that's kind of easy to work with. If you have a lot of almost like tiles, you can therefore go and arrange it that way. You can also choose to delete or duplicate. If you duplicate, you get a second version of it. Very easy. And then edit is just simply editing the current note that is selected. You can also do a um, rotation as you might like. So if you want to like have, um, you know, pop for something, like if you had a series of ideas about one topic, like let's say topic number one, you could almost have this as a title and then you can resize it for what you want. So if you want your ideas to be bigger and the title to be smaller, you can do something like this and then maybe curve it. And again, that'll go on top. Anything basically that comes next will always supersede or go on the layer above the last few. Um, this one was um, second in order. This was the first, so it goes on top of this one, but it goes under this other one called, it's kind of confusing, we can call it test three now. Uh, you remember I just duplicated it and that's why it was called test two twice. So you could see, kind of makes sense, right? Um, layer on top, layer beneath. And you can again change that by just deciding on bringing it to front, backward, sending the back, and so forth. So you could use, you know, sticky notes as a little pop um, labels for any of your discussions that you're trying to create. You can also, of course, go and do the text box here. And that is exactly how I created this one up here. So once you do that and you select it, you have a few choices that come up at the top that um, do not come up if you're doing the sticky note. So if I select the text box versus the sticky note, you see the menus at the top will change for me. I can choose paragraph alignment so I can do left, right, or center justification. I can then choose different text color and I can also choose the type of font as far as like a display font or not. It doesn't appear like you can actually choose this specific font that I can find in here. So again you could resize this and what's nice about it as you resize you're not having to go to a font menu and change the size of the font so it almost views it like it's a more of a graphic than an actual text in a word processor that you can change the font. This is almost like, you know, a graphic, just how it works. You can do the same exact operations for a text box as you can for the sticky note, what well, I'm calling a sticky note. You can also draw a circle if you like that. And you have the same choices there. So it's just a, a, a variation on um, things. And then you can also do square any choice really. So it seems like the first time you select something in a lot of cases. And use your delete key very easily if you don't want to use the undo at the top or the eraser. The eraser would be really slow to use and it doesn't look like. The eraser would be really slow to use in cases like this. So when you click on this menu the first time it kind of just selects what's there we won't go to image, but then the second time, so I clicked once, the second time allows you, if there are options, sub options, you can select things like that, create the arrow and so forth. And if you wanted to do color on this, you'll see again another menu comes up. So just keep in mind that for stickies, for text boxes, for the shapes, different options come up. So this will allow me like in Photoshop or PowerPoint to format the background to a different color and I can also select the outline, right? So you can select two different colors in there. Your background is here, the paint bucket, and then the pen is the border color. So that's pretty easy to use. And then we also have um, a laser, which I read about this when I first saw the laser and it doesn't have a sub menu, I was like, what does this laser do? Um, it's for emphasis. So if you're talking with your students, they could lay out all their ideas. You could then start to do this and kind of emphasize things. And what's nice about it is it's a momentary emphasis, but it doesn't stay on the screen. So it really allows you opportunity just to emphasize without having to erase something or undo it. So it's a really smart choice, I think, having the laser this way. 
So those are the main functions of the Jamboard. What I guess I would recommend is once you've again figured out your share settings so that everybody can do it. I just realized I didn't show you the image one, but that's pretty self-explanatory. So that would be just bringing in by URL, Google Image Search. Um, let's see, I'll just type the word bird. How about that? And you would just click that. And it's really quick. So actually using a Google Image Search could be pretty smart because it's such a quick opportunity to bring something in, to use it. Um, as a point of emphasis or even to show your students something. So again, just go to the image browser and choose all these different options for image searches and so forth. So those are all the features and I guess what I was saying a second ago is that if you're thinking about using this for a class again, it might be a great way to create a sense of collaboration around key ideas. So I will ask students to define culture and then we'll see all the different definitions of culture and then I'll start to group them. So if some students define culture in one particular way that maybe focuses on like key characteristics, I'll group all those there. If other students define culture, um, if I had other sticky notes, you know, in other ways, I'll group those here. And then I might add my own, uh, you know, titles to the top to kind of group those and name those. And I might also then use the laser to emphasize things as I'm talking to them. So you could do this in a variety of different ways as brainstorming sessions for my case you know how does culture affect you how does it not affect you and then at the end we'll just ask about answer questions about written assignment one so I really think it's an opportunity to use this Jamboard in a way that could create collaboration and discussion in your class you could totally do the whiteboard in canvas but the whiteboard in canvas is not as good as this it's not as full-fledged this just allows you more options the only additional thing you have to do is just get the sharing going so that is not too bad because if you do the copy link like this um, anyone who's logged on to the internet they don't even have to have a gmail account they can interact with this as long as you provide them the URL and again the URL is going to be that unique identifier at the top you'll cut and paste that you'll copy it and then when you get into your um, browser I can show you on here um, you know this is the the link and so you could just share that with your students in canvas before you start like I'm doing in my modules or when you um, jump onto zoom just put this in the zoom chat they'll click on it and have this interaction so see how it works for you I'm trying it out in fall 2021 and I'll give you my take on it as well just to see if uh, this does have the opportunity to maybe spark some conversation and good discussions among my students in my 102 class here in the fall Okay, so that is going to be it today, talking about the use of Jamboards in your professional work here at LTCC. As always, reach out with any questions or concerns, and I'll be back shortly with additional videos in this series.